compassion, inner peace, expanded consciousness. Wetware Media presents Dana Sawyer on his new audiobook, The Perennial Philosophy Reloaded, a guide for the mystically inclined. This modern synthesis of universal truths found across mystical traditions offers a fresh perspective and renewed sense of meaning for spiritual seekers and anyone curious about life's big questions. And now, Dana Sawyer. Well, the perennial philosophy as a viewpoint has been around for uh, 70 years, 80 years now, but the central view is a theory of understanding a particular type of mystical experience that um, Aldous Huxley called the unitive knowledge, which means uh, a feeling of oneness with the universe, a feeling that everything is interconnected and part of one thing that also includes you. And uh, Huxley looked across the mystical traditions of the world's religions, and he found this experience was something that the traditions held in common. So this view that consciousness exceeds the brain, that we're not just uh, what Alan Watts called skin encapsulated egos, that we have an aspect of our own consciousness that transcends our individuality. Uh, the great mystic Rumi once said that you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. And so there's this idea in the perennial philosophy that consciousness is universal and the brain is really a machine for localizing, contextualizing consciousness. And so the mystic is a person who's experiencing themselves not only as an individual person walking around in the world, but actually tapping into this level of consciousness that's universal. And uh, perennial philosophers believe that the mystics were experiencing life that way and that we all have the latent capacity to experience life that way. So the perennial philosophy is a family of theories for understanding that experience of oneness with reality. What do you mean by reloaded? Well, uh, like I say, in the 60s and 70s, it was the dominant interpretation. But then in the 80s, postmodernism came along. And postmodernism's viewpoint was that there is uh, no level of parity or agreement between the world's mystical traditions, that they were all siloed positions with no cross-cultural significance. And yet, in the last 30, 40 years, lots of different scholars, uh, including me, have been writing about the virtues of the perennial philosophy as an interpretation. And so there have been a lot of updates and a lot of nuance added, for instance, in the disciplines of uh, philosophy and neuroscience, there's strong evidence for the idea that our consciousness transcends the brain. So it's a reload because it's taking that original position and updating it in light of uh, contemporary neuroscience, psychology, philosophy, religious studies, etc. What do you mean by a guide for the mystically inclined? When you say the term mystical experience, people think of it either as woo-woo and something to dismiss, or they think of it as something that doesn't happen to them. But what I've found is in reality, people have these unitive experiences all the time. They'll be walking on a beach and they'll feel like, wow, I don't know what happened to me. I, there was no future. There was no past. I was just in this timeless moment where everything felt so pregnant with meaning, though I didn't know what it actually meant. Well, from the perspective of the perennial philosophy, 
they were actually setting, settling into a mind space where they were tapping into that level of their own consciousness that is universal. So that universal aspect of their mind was looming forward into experience. And so many people will say, oh, that was kind of weird, that was fun, I don't know how to make it happen again, and set it over here. But this book is giving them a way not only to understand those experiences, but to reify them and value them. And the more they value those experiences, in my experience, the more often they happen. What techniques or insights do you share in the audiobook? Well, the first thing, as I say, that the book does, and I, I think this is really a very strong point about the book, is it gives the reader uh, a way of understanding experiences that may very well already be happen happening to them. What are not only called mystical experiences, but noetic experiences, experiences of uh, inner knowing. And then uh, what the book also does is say, how can we cultivate these experiences? And there's a whole chapter on that. So it's, it's validating traditional methods of consciousness expansion, like meditation, yoga, uh, contemplation, Sufi dancing, these drumming, shamanic drumming. But at the same time, it also discusses more uh, 21st century techniques like sensory deprivation tanks, uh, biofeedback, uh, brain entrainment devices, psychedelics, these sorts of things. Uh, music. What, uh, what a lot of people will tell you is that they don't practice meditation or yoga, but they often have unitive experiences when they're in nature or when they're listening to music or uh, when they're in an art gallery. I mean, if everything is coming out of consciousness, then everything is a platform for having that experience. Why is the perennial philosophy important for modern society? Oh, I think it's so, so, so relevant. Uh, you know, I saw increasingly from about the nine, late 1980s, Gen X was that. I don't remember exactly. But um, as the meaning deficit has been growing in our culture, uh, people have been moving away from the traditional religions in a lot of ways. But they there's a, a, a lack of meaning and purpose that's growing. And there's a um, sadness around that. There's I saw in so many of my students uh, that lack of meaning and also a sense of oneself as isolated in the universe that, um, you know, uh, Alan Watts said that sometimes we feel like skin encapsulated egos, that we're just these little autonomous uh, wind-up toys made out of meat or something, and that uh, that isolation can be very destructive to one's psyche. So what if you had an experience of oneness with reality? And that experience of oneness is a platform for our interconnection with all other life and all other beings. What if we did see ourselves not as a drop in the ocean, but as the entire ocean in a drop? All of a sudden, identity broadens. All of a sudden, what we think of as me is uh, expanded terrifically and interconnected with all life. I remember once I saw a New Yorker cartoon of a, a yogi sitting out in front of a cave with a, a little boy in front of him. And the yogi is gesturing to the Himalayas and he says, son, someday all of this will be you. <laughs> and I loved that cartoon because here's the idea that if we cultivate these latent potentialities of our consciousness, then um, people regularly have this experience of, uh, Wow, no, 
uh, not that it's all about me, but that I share in common with all life this platform of consciousness that um, Ralph Waldo Emerson talked about. Maybe it's a situation where all of consciousness at the cosmic scale is just looking out of lots of different sets of eyeballs. And so that shared sense of identity creates something like what the astronauts call the overview effect. They go into space and all of a sudden they see the whole planet as just one thing. And that overview informs their behavior ever after. While something very similarly happens in inner space as well as outer space, when you go very deep inside, that cognition that everything is part of one thing creates a much more holistic platform for one's daily behavior. So I, I think the potentiality of that, I mean, I get excited about it for the same reason that most perennial philosophers do. Who will enjoy this audiobook? I think the target audience for this book is uh, people who are interested in consciousness studies, consciousness expansion, self-actualization, uh, altered states of consciousness, people who have uh, the psychology of consciousness, people who are interested in um, understanding their own unit of experiences. What is this that happens to me in nature? Why do I feel such peace and uh, even love when I'm uh, in nature? These kinds of experiences, it gives uh, a way to understand them and appreciate them. And since everybody has these experiences, then the audience is everybody, I suppose. How will this audiobook help listeners? This audiobook will help uh, listeners understand that experience, those experiences of unity, interconnectedness, oneness. Uh, this book will update an understanding of the perennial philosophy for people who may first have read about it 30 or 40 years ago, but now all of a sudden they'll hear fresh information in support of the viewpoint. So those, those are the two primary things that I see it doing. It will also give people tips on how to cultivate these unitive experiences. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, what, I, what, what else would I like to share? I think the most important thing, uh, Aldous Huxley once said that he believed that our latent human potentialities of consciousness are our planet's greatest unused, undeveloped natural resource. Right now, we, we're facing all these problems like overpopulation, pollution, too much waste, lack of resources, degradation of habitat, et cetera, et cetera. But Aldous Huxley believed these were really just symptoms of a deeper problem. And the deeper problem was the way that we see our relationship to the world that we need a different worldview as a platform for new ways of thinking and behaving. So expanding consciousness, you know, most people are, in my opinion, uh, only watching one channel on the human TV set and thinking that's all the possibilities. But there are other states of consciousness, and consciousness can be made more authentic, in my opinion, when we also re realize and experience these deeper dimensions of what we are. So integrating that experience of those deeper dimensions into our worldview, uh, Peter Russell once called it an inner Manhattan project, because it's such a gigantic uh, Potential. It has such a potential for a sea change in the way we experience our relationship to each other, 
the way we experience our relationship to the natural world, and even the way we relate to ourselves, what we think of as who we are. So I, I agree with Huxley that there's tremendous potential there yet to be developed. The Perennial Philosophy Reloaded, a guide for the mystically inclined, is available now at all major audiobook retailers. 